John, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Julie. It's always I fun to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad you are because I wanted to talk to you. I know we're doing a wastewater study, a COVID-19 wastewater study. But be kind of, before we kind of jump into that, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Tumwarf and what is Tumwarf because I don't think a lot of people know what that is. Oh, I think you're right. So Tumwarf is an acronym for the Truckee Meadows Water Reclamation Facility, which is a big, long word for our sewage treatment plant. Uh, Tumwarf is the largest treatment plant here in the Truckee Meadows and serves uh, most of the res all well in fact all of the residents of Sparks and a big majority of the city of Reno residents. And we operate that here in Sparks, is that correct? That's correct. So the plant is jointly owned by the city of Sparks and the city of Reno. Um, they are the capital partner and the city of Sparks is in charge of the operations of the plant. So it leads me into my discussion about the wastewater study and I know that kind of sounds a little interesting to a lot of people but basically with COVID-19 we have partnered with the University of Nevada Reno on a, on a study for wastewater to find out if there's COVID-19 in there am I saying that correctly? That, you Can know you that's me a little? well done I like that yeah so we are very fortunate here at the City of Sparks we are actually a member of the Nevada Water Innovations Institute up at UNR. Uh, our technical staffs work with theirs uh, on all kinds of things dealing with water. In this case, when COVID broke out uh, back in March, uh, we started seeing news articles and we saw things in our technical journals about what is called environmental surveillance of wastewater. Uh, and what that is, is you can test the wastewater at the treatment plant or you can collect it from the pipes in the ground, the collection system, and you can test that wastewater to see what's in it. In this case, what we're looking for uh, are the markers for the, for the COVID-19 virus or the um, SARS-2 COVID virus. Uh, turns out that when we become infected uh, with the virus, if unfortunately we get infected, uh, our bodies start to shed uh, a portion of that virus, it's not a live virus at that point, it's a dead virus, into our waste stream, which then can be collected uh, at the treatment plant and tested. And from that testing, we can do some uh, scientific modeling to determine how much of our population may be infected. And then what's really exciting about this is our bodies will start to shed the virus about 14 days or so before we start to show symptoms. So it's kind of an early warning uh, study, if you will. I, I've been calling it the canary in the coal mine. Uh, we will see uh, the results of that wastewater testing and know or have an idea of how much of our population here in the Truckee Meadows may be infected a couple of weeks before people show up at their doctor's offices or show up for physical testing. Uh, that advanced knowledge will be very handy if uh, coming into this late fall, early winter, which is typically our flu and cough and cold season anyway. Uh, if we see the numbers going up, we can put a warning out to our medical industry, our doctors and the people taking care of us that, hey, we're starting to see the virus increase uh, at the treatment plant. Um, look out, people may start getting sick, get ready. Vice versa, we, if we see the numbers going down, which we're all hoping for. Yes, definitely. Then we'll also know that what we're doing as far as social distancing, wearing masks, is starting to work. And things are getting better in our community. And, and decision makers uh, across the valley can start to consider changes to the way we're, we're managing the virus, managing the pandemic, such as perhaps some businesses can open uh, to a greater extent. Right now, our, our restaurants are limited to about 50% of capacity. Um, this data could help us make decisions in the future that could be good for the, for the medical industry, knowing that people are getting sick, or really good for our business community because we know that we're, we're getting on top of this virus and things are getting better. So not only a health benefit per se, sure. but also kind of an economic benefit as well. Right. I mean, uh, so when you're trying to manage a pandemic, which, you know, I've been here 20 years, so this is my first one, right. uh, there wasn't a big playbook for it. So. We've had to make decisions as we go along. Uh, having this kind of information will help us make those decisions better. Is there a way that, based on the information that you're gathering, that you can tell where maybe clusters of COVID would be based on the testing that we're doing in wastewater? Uh, so also part of the, the research will be uh, to go out into the collection system. So not just at the plant, but out in the pipes that are bringing it to the plant. Uh, depending on where those locations are tested, we could see maybe certain areas of town, north, south, east, west, um, 
may show a higher amount of, of, of the presence of the virus than, than the overall at the plant. So that would give you an idea that this area where those collection pipes are coming together may have a cluster. Um, if you really want to get fancy with the uh, research, and this was actually done at the University of Arizona, you could sample it at individual locations. For instance, um, the sewer pipes coming out of UNR. That's what University of Arizona did. They sampled their pipes coming out of their dorms, and they were able to determine that someone was sick. Uh, they tested, I think it was 211 of the students in the dorms. They found two that were carrying the virus, but were completely asymptomatic. So that probably stopped a big outbreak, at least in that uh, dorm facility at the University of Arizona. We could do something similar here. We would have to find a target, and start testing and see if there's a cluster. Uh, areas where we may want to do it uh, are probably best determined by the researchers up at UNR. They're the smart kids in the room that we uh, gave this award to to go study it, um, but we'll see. And speaking of that, we are using CARES Act funding for this. Can yes. you explain a little bit about that? So the CARES Act funding came to the city. Uh, actually, each of us here in the Tri Meadows received a distribution of CARES Act funding. Uh, the CARES Act funding um, can be used for this purpose, um, for the rules for the CARES Act funding. Uh, probably the biggest test for this one, for its appropriateness with CARES Act funding, were, were two things. One, is it a benefit to the, to the community? Is it going to help us with this pandemic? Absolutely. This is going to provide data we desperately need to understand the extent of the infection here in the Truckee Meadows. And two, the other big test is, did we have budget in our current fiscal year or previous fiscal year, since this hit right at a split, uh, to pay for it? And the answer is no. We certainly weren't thinking about doing environmental surveillance for a virus uh, in fiscal year 20 or 21, for that matter. So it passed two of the tests, and I think it's a great use of the funds. So how much did we, how much is the study, how much are we funding for the study? The funding level was about $1.8 million, Julie. Right, so, so right now we can study way back into April to and break keep, out. Uh, keep going forward. So yeah. very fascinating. It so, is fascinating. Yeah. Now there, there's another piece to the research that we haven't talked about yet. So once they have all that lab data tested, uh, then another group of researchers outside the lab will create what's called a community prevalence model. They'll use statistics and, and mathematics to uh, help us determine the presence of the virus in our population. That's kind of the second piece. And with the community model created, which is, this is kind of nice once we have this model, um, assuming this won't be our first and only pandemic, uh, that model will exist for the next one. And we'll be able to get to this a little, quick, a little more quickly than we did this time. So really, kind of unending benefits to this wastewater study for COVID-19. It is. It, it, it kind of marks the beginning. Uh, a couple of other great benefits here. Uh, Dr. Krishna Pajila up at UNR, uh, who is part of the Nevada Water In uh, Innovations Institute. Uh, part of the grant money pays for equipment. Uh, it's very sophisticated equipment. We're measuring um, a presence of something in, in the orders of parts per billion, probably, in the wastewater. That lab uh, will have the equipment. Uh, there'll be research uh, students, graduate students, ready to use it. Uh, it will exist in our community and will be a benefit to all of us. Uh, whether we're testing for a future virus, um, in the past, uh, wastewater surveillance was used to look for the presence of the opioid addiction problem that was going across the country. It can be used in a lot of ways. Environmental surveillance of wastewater is not new, but what's neat is we now have the ability to do it here in the Truckee Meadows at our great university. So I even hate to say this, but uh, something positive coming out of uh, this virus is that we're able to, to do some very significant research. This, this research is going on around the globe, so we'll be a part of that. We'll be able to add our data into what everybody else is finding. And that all together, everything the scientific community is doing across the globe to understand this outbreak is going to help us in the future because as, I, as I've said earlier, I don't, I don't know that this is gonna be our last pandemic. Local governments have plans for floods. We have plans for earthquakes. We have plans for big snow events. Uh, we, we didn't have a pandemic plan. So the sum of all this research, all of the lessons that we learn as we go through this pandemic are likely going to be used to create local and probably statewide pandemic response plans so that the next time that this happens, if it happens, we'll be better prepared. Wow. Thank you.
Great information, great information. And I'm really excited to, to let people know about this innovative you know, project that we've got going on. And, and I think a great use of CARES Act funding too. So thank I you agree. very much. And it's a wonderful partnership with our university. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank I you, Julie. I appreciate you being here. All thank right. Thank you.